How you doing AP Econ students? It's Mr. Clifford. It's time to learn the most important graph in all of macroeconomics, aggregate demand and aggregate supply. You already learned about demand and supply in regular markets. Now it's time to look at the entire economy, looking at aggregates. Okay, first one is aggregate demand. Aggregate demand, just like regular demand, is downward sloping. Why? Because when the price level is high, the quantity demanded in our entire economy is not going to be very high, right? Price level is the general prices of things. If the price level was lower, then more people would want to buy stuff. Now, aggregate demand is actually made up of the GDP, the four components of GDP, C plus I plus G plus XN. The next step is aggregate supply. Aggregate supply, as you could expect, is going to be upward sloping. But pay attention, this is the short run aggregate supply. When price levels go up, more firms will produce more. Done. You've seen that before. But, pay attention, in the short run, the prices go up, the wages of workers and the price of resources don't go up in the short run. And so when the price goes up, firms will produce more because they're making more profit. But in the long run, when price goes up by a certain amount, let's say it doubles, the wages of the workers will also increase in the long run. And so that leads to another graph, something called the long run aggregate supply. I'll put it right here. The reason why it's vertical, the long run aggregate supply is when the price level goes up, the actual amount produced is not going to increase, right? Because wages go up by the same amount, right? That's the concept. The long run aggregate supply is perfectly vertical. Okay, now the way I drew this, I drew this at quantity full employment. What does that mean? Well, it means that the long run aggregate supply is right here, right? And the aggregate demand supply in the short run is right here. And so we're at full employment output. Our economy is running at full employment. Let's show you visually why the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical. Let's assume right now we're here at point A where supply, aggregate supply and aggregate demand meet. And now there's an increase in consumer spending. Like consumers want more stuff. Aggregate demand shifts to the right, right over here. Now we have a higher price level and a higher quantity. Well, now we have something called an inflationary gap. Right? Our current GDP is beyond the full employment GDP. Right? And now that's going to put upward pressure on prices. Right, if there's more people who want stuff, we've got demand pull inflation, and that's going to lead to upper pressure of prices and wages. And in the long run, those wages will go up by the same amount that prices went up. When that happened, that causes aggregate supply to shift to the left. Right? Aggregate supply now would shift to the left because wages went up and prices for resources went up, leading to a new equilibrium, which is at B, right back in the long run. Now, it also goes the other direction. Let's say, for example, we're in a recessionary gap. Aggregate demand falls, that puts pressure on downward pressure on prices, decreasing price level and decreasing the quantity. Now that puts us here. Now, in theory, when the price level falls and wages are flexible, so wages eventually fall, and if wages fall and resource prices fall, that would actually increase aggregate supply, shifting aggregate supply to the right leading to a new equilibrium, right? We started at A, we ended at B. Where is it? It's the long run. That's why the long run aggregate supply is vertical. Make sure you know that. Aggregate demand, aggregate supply, the long run aggregate supply. Till next time.